Welcome to Unit 15 of the TESOL course at Southern Utah University. This video focuses on assessing language proficiency. We'll talk about different purposes for assessment. We'll talk about the terms validity, reliability, and washback. And then we'll talk about how to create assessments, how to administer them, how to teach test skills, and then what to do with assessment data. There's lots of different reasons to assess students in different types of language tests. One of them is a placement test. We use a placement test to help determine whether a student needs to be in a program, and if in the program, maybe what level or what courses they need to take. Uh, a diagnostic test is similar to this, but this is usually given when a student is in a course, and the diagnostic test, a teacher might use that to evaluate what skills need to be taught to the students in the class and what skills they already know so the teacher can then focus on other skills during the course. A proficiency test is a test that's used to determine overall what's the general ability of a student. So if we think about, for instance, that ACTful, um, CEPHER, Canadian Language Benchmarks, a proficiency test might tell us where someone is on that scale. Um, big, uh, large tests like the IELTS or the TOEFL test for English language learners um, can be considered proficiency tests that then sometimes people use as a placement test. Um, an achievement test is often used within a course or a program to ensure that students have achieved the outcomes for that course or program. Um, so it's more based on have they accomplished the objectives. Um, the last one we have listed here is an aptitude test. An aptitude test, I've never given one to students. Um, I don't think I've ever taken one myself, but the goal there is to determine how um, well a student might be in general at learning languages. So aptitude tests for language learning often have to do things with how well you can memorize things, recognize patterns. Um, there's a few other aspects. Um, that are often used in aptitude tests. These might be used by recruiters, maybe for the military or government, or other people who are interested in finding out who is good at language learning and so who might be best uh, suited to enroll in a, a language program. Um, when we are assessing, we don't want to think about do we want to do a formative assessment or summative? And we've talked about these terms before. Formative assessment is assessing someone during the experience to know what they're doing well and where they need more support or practice. A summative assessment happens at the end of an experience and it's often used in the form of an achievement uh, assessment. We're trying to figure out did they reach the goals, the minimum, the benchmark that's required for this experience. Uh, when we think about assessment we can also think about whether we're doing it formally or informally. So a formal assessment is usually like a test or an exam where students ha are, have to show performance or answer questions and we analyze that data and give them a score. But informal assessment uh, is more observing, measuring, looking, um, and then using that information to um, respond to students' needs, but they may never take a paper and pencil test or there may never be a formal situation where the student knows that there's an assessment happening. The teacher is just observing and learning. Um, here's some important assessment terms. Validity, reliability, and washback. Validity, if we think about a bullseye, validity is a, a test that hits the mark or the bullseye. The bullseye is our goal. So we design a test because we're trying to find out this about the student. Maybe we want to know which students um, uh, have the language necessary to become uh, a nurse, that they've got the oral language. So our test is measuring oral language skills in a nursing context. If the test does that effectively, then we say it's valid. It's measuring what it's supposed to measure and it's applied to the correct situation. Um, if instead we're giving a grammar test and we're trying to actually find out whether or not um, someone is going to be good with oral language as a nurse, that's not really a valid measure because it's measuring something different than what we're looking for. Reliability is how well the test is at producing the same results in the same situation. So for example, if we were to throw a dart at a bullseye and we always hit the outer ring, but we always hit it in the same spot, that could still be considered a reliable test. You know, every time the learner takes that test, they get a similar result. 
but if that result isn't where we want it to be, it's not a test that's measuring the thing that we want, then it could be reliable but not valid. Um, so we want to make sure that um, tests produce reliable results, that uh, a learner taking that test with the same ability would get a similar kind of score and that we could trust that score. Washback, um, not to be confused with something that might happen when you drink a can of soda, but washback means the influence of the test on the learning situation. So if we have a test that's assessing one particular skill, what's going to happen is learners are going to focus on that skill and teachers are going to spend their time teaching that skill. And so if that is not what we want the learners and the teachers to be focusing on, we've got a problem with washback. We need to change the test so that it's assessing the kinds of skills that we want learners to be practicing and we want teachers to be teaching. Um, this is what uh, went into the big change to the TOEFL about, well, and that's almost 20 years ago. But the TOEFL used to be a test that just had reading, listening, and a grammar section. And so that's all that learners focused on. Nobody practiced productive language, writing, or speaking. And so um, ETS, the company that makes TOEFL, was criticized for this. They did a washback study, they revised the test, and now their test focuses on productive language as well as receptive language. It more matches the kinds of skills that learners use in academic settings. And so there's more positive washback in the sense that when learners are practicing for the test, they're actually learning skills that should help them in an academic learning environment anyways. Um, so that's important things we need to consider when we use a test. Is it valid? Is it reliable? And does it have positive washback or a positive influence on what learners are learning and what teachers are teaching? As we design assessments, there's different ways that we can assess learners, different methods. Um, you could use a multiple choice test. Um, now a multiple choice test might be okay for listening or reading it's probably not a good way to assess someone's ability to write or speak. In that situation, we would probably want to use a performance assessment. Um, so we may have them do a timed writing, or they may have some kind of speaking that they need to record, um, or we observe them speaking and we use some kind of rubric to assess their ability. So we need to be wise about which method we're using and making sure that that method is appropriate for the kind of thing that we're trying to measure. We also need to realize that with reading and listening, even using a multiple choice test, that's an indirect measure. We're measuring maybe their comprehension, uh, do they understand it, based on their ability to answer questions. It's hard to observe someone listening because we can't get inside their head. Um, other assessment methods could be things like projects, having them complete a project. And you have to have a good rubric, a good description of what the project needs to contain, but that could be a way to assess someone's language ability by the ability that they had to complete uh, an effective project. Portfolios is another way to do this. Students cr uh, create different documents. Um, they um, select from those the best of those documents, put them in a portfolio, and there's a rubric that assesses it. Um, the advantage of portfolios, it gives students some control over the assessment. Um, they often include some reflective practice, so students are learning about themselves as they create the portfolio. Um, but it often includes lots of productive language, so it helps um, the student practice good skills um, as they prepare for that portfolio. When we administer tests, there's lots of things we can fig uh, think about in order to make sure it's a good experience. Um, and here's just some of them. The one, the environment. We need to make sure that the classroom is clean, um, that students can hear well, and if there's any instructions, but it's quiet so they can study and think well. We need to make sure that they're warm. Um, ideally, I would not recommend giving a test in an environment like that's pictured here with lots of students in a huge room. Um, that could be very overwhelming for a number of students. But we also need to think about administration. Do you need lots of proctors in it? Is it better to do it all in one big room? Is it better to break it up into smaller rooms? What can we do to make sure that it's a fair testing environment, that students aren't cheating, um, that some students aren't advantaged more than others? If you're te testing all students, but they're in different classrooms, is there anything on the walls, diagrams, posters that might give some students an advantage over others? So we need to be thinking about those things and making sure that if we do allow technology, that that technology is available to all students, 
um, but it's given in a secure way that we feel like it's not compromising the validity or reliability of the results. Um, and as we mentioned, we need to be consistent, not just between different learners, but if we're going to be giving that test at multiple times or dates, that there's a consistent way that the test is given at each time so that it's um, fair. As teachers, there's a lot we can do to help students do better when they have to do a language assessment. One of them is teaching them test-wise strategies, how to answer multiple choice questions, how to answer the different types of questions that might be on that test. Um, if there's going to be a typing portion, how to use a keyboard, how to use a mouse. If there's going to be a speaking portion, do they know how to use headphones and microphones correctly? Teaching them time management skills. If they know that there's a certain amount of time they have to take the test, are they good at making sure they only um, that they budget their time accordingly so they'll get through all sections of the test and maybe still have time to go back and review and verify that responses are correct? Um, teachers, if especially if it's a high stakes test, may want to do some test preparation with the students and help them see what does the test look like. Give them a sample test so they know what to expect in each section. This is really important if someone's going to take a high stakes admissions test like the TOEFL. Understanding how that test is organized and what the student is expected to do in each section can help them feel more confident during the test, lower their stress so that effective filter um, doesn't interfere with their performance. Lastly, if we've done all, gone to all this work to assess students, we should be using that assessment data. One, we can use it to give students feedback on their strengths and weaknesses and guide them towards uh, practicing the skills that they need to improve. Teachers can use that assessment data to help them understand how to plan their lessons. If they can see that learners are doing well on this skill, they don't need to spend maybe as much time teaching that, and instead they can focus on skills where they can see that learners uh, are weakest in. Um, it can, assessment data can also help programs and uh, curriculum with evaluation. So if we can see that learners in one of our particular classes keep failing the test, it might ask us, well, is it a bad test? Or if it is, we know that it's a good test, well, then maybe this course, students aren't prepared for it. And maybe they need another, um, a better instruction, or maybe they need another course before it to help prepare them. So assessment data can be very helpful in helping a program uh, evaluate itself and finding out where does it need to make improvements? How can it better support students? So in this video, we've talked about a lot of things. We've talked about the purposes of assessment, gone over some specialized terms, talk about how to create, administer, and teach for assessment, and then finally, how to use that data to improve a class, a program, or to help students improve themselves.